Now, I've, I've decided to do my research on the MLS a little bit. Now, I'm not doing it by titles one and the best team and the worst team. I'm, I'm doing it by the actual founding, you know, how the league has grown, basically, since 93, when the initial uh, documents were signed and the first 10 teams were saying that we're going to play on the first season in 96. So, <laughs> obviously, the US won the rights to have the 94 World Cup, and part of that bidding process was to set up a, a major... And professional, what I would call football, what obviously you Americans call soccer, and set up the MLS. So the founding document was actually um, signed. The signing date is the 17th of December 1993, just after my fourth birthday. That's when the league is now set in stone, and we know that there's going to be a future for the league in years to come. So the World Cup takes place to reasonable levels of success. Brazil win that World Cup. But in 1996, in March, the first 10 clubs play their first games. And I'm not going to go into the league structure because that that um, that is something that I'm still learning about the MLS, that you have East and West Conferences, which, again, is very alien to me as a European who follows European football um, and the promotion relegation structure that you don't have. So I'm learning stuff about this as well as you'll be learning about football as well if you're get, just getting into the MLS. Anyway, the first 10 clubs form in 96. Now, I'm going to go through... Uh, the, the teams that were actually around in 96 and um, you had the Colorado Rapids, the Columbus Crew, DC United, Sporting Kansas City, how they're now known because there's a few name changes for teams in, um, from inception to now, LA Galaxy, David Beckham and uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic fame, uh, the New England Revolution, the New York Rebels, they've changed name a few times, San Jose Earthquakes, they did go out of uh, the league for three years in 2005, but they were a founding uh, member of the league, and they came back in, in 2008, and the Chicago Fire. Now, one of the teams that helped set up the league, the Tampa Bay Munity, um, went out of business in 2001. Um, it didn't, didn't last very long, and there's a reason for that, and I'll get to that. But anyway, uh, the, the early years, another team joined in 98 in the Miami Fusion to make it uh, 11 teams in the league. But in 2001, they played, them and the Tampa Bay Mutiny played their last seasons. They, after 2001, they, they, you know, they, they don't re return for 2002. And there was an issue early on. The league was losing money. There were problems with uh, getting fans into the stadiums and fans actually buying into the sport. It wasn't growing at the rate that the league wanted. And it was sort of seen as a bit of an expensive failure, which was a problem because America, the US were constantly qualifying for the World Cup. So there were clearly quality players playing for the American national side. But domestically, the game wasn't drawing the fan base and, and had issues. <coughs> Excuse me. In 2005, the San Jose Earthquakes also, uh, for only three years, but they, they pull out, which which left um, the MLS with a, a choice. They they had to either get another they, so they got another team in Real Salt Lake at that year as well, but they left, that left the league with a choice. Either they have a very small, very minor league with only nine or ten teams struggling financially, or they go on expansion. And at the time, they decided to go on the, the, the 2005 onwards expansion, which is a rapid expansion for, uh, for any major sports league in, the, in, in North America. I think you would agree. It is a crazy amount of expansion. Or they, they fold. Now, in the time that they're starting this crazed expansion, as I'll call it, players like Steven Gerrard, David Beckham, Kaká, Andrea Pirlo, and now Zlatan Ibrahimovic, to name but a few have come over and joined the league at various points since 2005, 2006. And they have come over, these big-name players that some Americans may have heard of before they came over. They definitely know who they are now, especially David Beckham. He helped transform the image of the game in the US and that helped grow the game. He's, one, he's a great ambassador, and we'll come back to him later on. But in 2005... Real Salt Lake joined, joined the league the year that San Jose Earthquakes decided to hire, have a three-year hiatus. They come in. A year later, Houston Dynamo joined. Now, bear in mind, in 2005, the Chivas USA also joined the league, but they've gone out of business since then in 2014. But, so, 2005, 2006, three teams have joined in two years. 2007, Toronto joined. San Jose come back in 2008. They, they got the money together to come back in 2008, so they rejoined. And a year later, Seattle Sounders uh, joined in 2009 followed by the Philadelphia Union in 2010, the Vancouver Whitecaps and Portland Timbers in 2011. They both joined. And then the Montreal Impact joined in 2012. And then the league is happy with, with that amount of teams. They're happy. They're happy with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. They have 18 teams at this point. 18. Sadly, the Chivas USA go out of business 2014, so a year later, we're back to 18 teams again with Orlando City joining and New York City FC. No, so, yeah. no, no 19 teams, sorry. We're now on 19 teams. And then Minnesota United joined in 2017, uh, so so does Atlanta United in 2017, and Los Angeles FC uh, joined this year in 2018. So now the league is at currently at 23 teams. Two more teams will be joining in the future. This is where David Beckham comes. I've done a video on this. He's already got his license now to have his his franchise. Now he aims to have it. I think 2020 is I think when it's confirmed now. So there'll be another team in Miami in 2020. There will be a team coming back to the Miami metropolitan area for the first time since 2001. So it's been 19 years since the uh, the Miami Fusion went out of business, but there, there's going to be a team in Miami. And David Beckham has been trying to get this team together for several years now and get backers together. He's finally, I think, in a position to say that we can unveil our strip, our name. We don't know what the team is going to be called. Well, we shall see what it be called and we'll see how successful it will be. Nashville will also be joining either next year or, the, or, or 2020 as well. And so the league is growing to 25 teams. Now, in 2005, the league was at crisis point. So they decided to go on the expansion route and, and just go, go hell for leather and see if expansion could work. And it has. And then the players I listed earlier, such as your Kaka, your David Beckham, your Steven Gerrard, uh, and Thorea Pirlo, who've won Champions Leagues and World Cups, um, they also helped grow the game massively. Um, and unfortunately, this this for this year, the US have missed out on World Cup qualification, uh, and they've been qualifying regularly since since '94. So for 20, 20 years, they haven't missed a World Cup, and then this this year they have. Uh, it's unfortunate, and that. Is a, is a problem, but the growth of the game is good. So there's going to be a lot of young people picking up, picking up the game, new fans buying in, young kids playing it for the first time. And so in the long term, I do believe uh, the MLS will become more and more successful and, and, and grow more and more. Now, there are rules in place like the marquee player rule. You're only allowed to have so many overseas players who are not USA based players. So um, there's that in place to try and encourage as much development of, of, of young American talent. And Canadian talent as well. So there's the overseas player rule. Also, what is not unique to the MLS, but very, very, very rare, because I know the A League in Australia is, is similar. There's no promotion and relegation, which is almost unique amongst um, football leagues. No promotion and relegation. In fact, it's very alien to to us not to have it here in Europe. Um, only I think in ice hockey do we not have promotion and relegation on all of the leagues. But generally speaking, in rugby union, rugby league, and what we call football, what you call soccer, we have promotion and relegation systems across Europe of some different varying types. But there is an up and downwards depending on either if you finish in the bottom two or three, you go down, and if you finish in the top two, and there's a playoff between three and four, for example, go up. And there's various other combinations of promotion and relegation. So you are almost unique in the, in the aspect of for a, a soccer league, as you will call it, of no promotion and relegation. That could be a unique selling point. That's something that we could consider here in Europe, possibly. But at the same time, it'd be interesting to see if the American, North American sports leagues consider a promotion relegation system and whether it is an option that could be put on the table to, you know, uh, as a way to restructure some of the leagues that you have. That could be an option. It could be very, very interesting to see if both, both sporting cultures sort of trade ideas. That could be interesting. So overall, the league is growing, and and within the next two years, there's going to be two more teams joining. So uh, it, it's it's getting big now. Um, obviously, there's not a lot of history to the league. The first game was played in '96. Some, of, I mean, I know the San Jose Earthquakes go back to the '70s when there was a previous incarnation of, of professional um, of a professional league in the US when players like George Best and Pele were playing in in North America. Um, so I do. I am aware that there is uh, um, some of the clubs do have an older history, and they have come from lower, like a, a different league formats. But there's not really a history in this league, and therefore these teams and cities are growing their history with these teams, which is interesting to see. But it's great to see that the league is right, you know, expanding year on year, and people in these locations, in the cities they are playing these games in, are buying in.
Um, so we'll have to see how, how how the league grows in the future. But this is just a, a little brief little history. Um, I didn't look at stadium capacities. I, I didn't look at you know who was the most successful team or who's got the best regular season or postseason record. I didn't go into that because I'm still learning a lot about the MLS and the history of it and 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 the success and failures of certain teams. I'm still learning about bits and pieces about it. But I thought I would cover briefly the founding, uh, the first season. Um, the bidding process of the World Cup was something that was new to me. How three teams have actually gone out of business and one team has come back into business, went out of business, and how uh, in the early, first half of the MLS or the first quarter of the MLS's existence, there were a lot of problems and they were struggling to get people uh, to buy in and support teams and they were struggling to fill stadiums and they were having money issues and how they completely turned that around by basically staring down a barrel of this league could fold and it could be a very expensive failure or sod it, we're going to go for broke. And they went for broke and it's paid off. And people like David Beckham have helped grow the game. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you are an MLS fan, if you if you are from any of the, if you support any of the teams who play in the MLS, I'd like to hear from you. Um, if you can fill me with any more knowledge, I would be more than happy to have the information that you guys can give me, because I know you guys out there are a knowledgeable bunch, you, those who watch this channel are a very knowledgeable bunch from their sporting history, um, and I'd like to hear from you, so thank you very much for watching, please like and subscribe and place those comments below, and I'll have some more videos for you soon.